Back in October of 2022, when I decided I was going to make my first full game, I naively thought I'd have a demo ready within a month, and that the game would be complete within two years. Now, after two years, hundreds of commits, over a thousand hours in A-Sprite, and many, many cups of coffee, I can say that it's nowhere close to being finished. Now that I've hit this milestone, I wanted to take the time to reflect on the last two years and how things have progressed since I first started working on my game. But it's also been a while since the last update, so in this video I'll be going over what I've done, what I'm currently working on, and what my plans are for the future. So first of all, I'm Alex, a solo developer working on Dreadwinter, a cosy game about running a fantasy coffee shop. My aim is for it to give you full control over how you want to run your cafe. From a fast-paced, profit-driven business, to a coffee-focused community hub. The idea of being able to decide how you wanted to play was something that I wanted to have from the beginning. In a lot of life and business sims, the main focus is always to make money and expand your business, rather than focusing on perfecting your craft. And I thought that a game where you could get things done by making good coffee, rather than using coffee as a way to make money to get those things done, was something that was missing from a lot of games. And so the concept for Dreadwinter started to come together. When I released my first devlog about 8 months into development, it was at a point where I finally felt confident enough to share my game with the world. But at the time I wasn't comfortable talking about the struggles I went through, and showing what the game was like before then. There are times where I feel like I haven't made any progress at all, and it can be quite hard to see the progress in your work, as things tend to change bit by bit over a long period of time. But looking back at how the game was two years ago, I can say for sure that there's been a lot of improvement. The first version of the game, or the prototype, was very simple compared to what I'd consider a prototype now. It was just a bunch of polygons, with the Godot icon being used to represent the characters, a rite of passage for any Godot developer. The focus was on trying to learn how to use the engine, and figuring out how to code the game loop for the cafe, so there wasn't much focus on art and assets at all. I do remember feeling quite hopeful though, when I was able to create a working game loop for the first time. It took about a month before I started working on any graphics, and looking back on it, it was quite rough. The original design for the cafe was quite cool as well, but I think it was definitely too ambitious for me at the time. I don't quite remember why I changed the design, but I think my vision of what the game would look like ended up changing over time. One of the longest parts of developing Dreadwinter was trying to establish a clear vision and identity for the game, in which I mean being able to give it a unique style and design. It always felt like I was trying to chase after something I saw in a dream, and I didn't have the ability to express the ideas I had in my head, so it never felt quite right. It took a few months to have a solidified idea of what the game would look like, and it's only within the last year or so where I felt like I've developed a style and identity for the game. I'm quite happy with the overall aesthetic, and I've reached a point where it does feel like it's really my game. I'm now starting to identify what parts need to be improved, since there are a lot of assets that are relics from earlier on. One of the difficulties in doing this is that it's relatively low priority in the development pipeline. I'm currently more focused on horizontal development, which means adding more features and content, rather than vertical, which would be improving and expanding the existing content. The core gameplay has been in the game for a while, but there's loads of little parts that still need doing. For example, I only just added the ability to customise the wallpaper and flooring in the cafe, which was a fairly small task, but I didn't seem to have the time for it before. The scope of the game has always been quite big, since I had a lot of ideas and wanted the player to have a lot of things to do outside of running a cafe. I haven't had many issues with how much there is to do, but oftentimes it takes much longer to add a feature than expected, which means that everything else gets pushed back. In the past, I felt the need to try to finish the game as fast as possible and achieve some sort of success to justify working on it. So I tended to focus on sticking to a schedule, overtaking the time to refine everything, which meant that if a feature took too long, I would just do enough to get it to work, or cut it. When I released my demo earlier this year, I think the effects of that mentality really showed. There were a lot of missing features and details I wasn't happy with, 
and ultimately I felt like it wasn't a good representation of the game so I took it down after a while. Nowadays I'm trying to take my time doing things and focusing on the quality of my work. This does have issues of its own since you can end up spending ages working on a single task which can lead to burnout. As an example, I've been working on designing the aquarium in Dreadwinter, which is something I planned to have from the beginning. I wanted it to be a massive tourist attraction, with different themed showrooms and a large water tunnel, which as you'd expect would take a long time to make. While I did take my time to make sure I was happy with what I designed, good art takes a combination of motivation, inspiration and energy, and I seem to be lacking in all three. What I did make looked good, but it felt like it was taking too long to draw something as simple as a rock, and so I ended up burning out for a while. Rather than continuing to grind it out, and creating something I wouldn't be happy with, I figured it was a better idea to leave it unfinished for now, than come back to it later, as it will likely require many more weeks to complete. If you're still here, thanks for listening to my rambling. I think that's everything I wanted to reflect on, so now let's move into the present. Currently, there are two big things I'm working on. The first is related to expanding the cafe and having additional menu options. There are four different expansions you can add to the cafe right now. Two of them will add more space by clearing up the upper floor, as well as building an extension on the ground floor. You have the option to build a basement area, though I haven't decided what it will be for, and you can also clear out the back room and set up a kitchen in there. My plan is to turn it into a small bakery, where you can make pastries and desserts to earn additional income. With the way the gameplay works right now, I think that running a kitchen while also making coffee and serving customers would mean that the player has to do a lot of running around and juggling tasks, which I think could be overwhelming for people looking to play a relaxed game. The grinding and brewing minigames are designed to be simple and quick, as there's something you'd be doing a lot in short bursts and I don't want the gameplay loop to feel like a chore. For something like baking, I'd want to have a more involved minigame, which I think would frequently take you out of the action of running the cafe, and would clash with my current game flow. In this case, the idea I currently have is to do the baking in between shifts, and then customers would order according to what's available. This would also give you something to do in the cafe during its downtime, and allow for longer minigames. A more difficult scenario I'm facing is of the process of making espresso. At the start of the game, you're only capable of making pour over coffee, which is a relatively simple process and works well with the quick mini games. As you progress through the game, you unlock the ability to make espresso, which has more steps involved and I feel should have a larger mini game to it. This obviously can only be done while the cafe is open, so there's a matter of designing it to fit within the game flow. A cafe shift takes around 10 minutes of real time, but if you're spending 2-3 to three minutes to make each espresso drink, things could really drag out, which might not be ideal for everyone. My goal here is to make the minigame fast paced and easy to do, while also making something that feels somewhat realistic and satisfying. The other big feature I'm working on is in regards to the combat system in the game. When I started on Dreadwinter, I wanted to have a combat system similar to other cozy games like Stardew Valley and Sunhaven, but recently I've been thinking about moving to a turn-based card battler, similar to a mix of Moonstone Island and Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, which is a style I actually prefer. My main concern is about changing things mid-development. While I don't think that in the cafe sim, the main draw of the game is the combat system, it's still quite a substantial change to make, so I've not fully committed to it yet. Currently, I don't think the existing combat system and exploration is that fun to play, and I don't find it that fun to make either. I have to design the dungeons with the combat in mind, so it does affect the development process as well. I built a prototype system that's separated from the current one to get an idea of how it would feel, but at the same time, it's hard to know how it would really be until I've committed the time to finalise it. My gut feeling is to make the change, but I do think that it will need some more planning first. Outside of that, my main goal is to finish the development of the world in Dreadwinter. There's some more major locations that need to be added in, such as Neo Solara, which is the financial capital of Lindengard, the country the game takes place in. 
it's a modern metropolis, similar to places like London and New York, and can be accessed by taking the train at a very high price, and there's more of an end game area for players that are looking to make a lot of money. There's also Solara, the royal capital, as well as some more dungeons to explore. I'm also working on adding seasons and seasonal events into the game. For now, it's pretty much just recolours of the backgrounds, but I want to have special decorations for each season. With my current backlog, there's still many more months of adding things into the game, but I'm hoping to get to a place where I can focus solely on polishing and cleaning up things next year. My aim for release is early 2026, but my experience is that development takes around twice as long as you'd expect, so I won't promise anything. I'm hoping that it's not too far off though. It's been a long journey of ups and downs, and I'm expecting that there'll be more of the same, but I don't regret going on it. Making Dreadwinter has made me learn and do a lot of things I wouldn't have otherwise, and I hope that one day people will be able to fully experience what I've been working on, and I'll continue to work hard to make it happen. That's it for this devlog, wishlist Dreadwinter on Steam, remember to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.